Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 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 Bhagavate 
So today we are having the inauguration of the worship of the deities of Sri Sri Gornitai. You can see the deities on the altar here, Gornitai, they're very, very merciful. Srila Prabhupada said, they're the most merciful forms of Krishna. Christ, Lord Krishna has anantarup, has many forms, but this form of Lord Chaitanya, wherein he's appearing along with his brother Nityananda, they are supremely merciful. He said, you can worship them just simply by kirtan. Just by kirtan they're pleased. You can see they're smiling. So Lord Chaitanya was described by one of the devotees, uh, I think it was Rupa Goswami, he said, Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pridayati, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gora Tvise Nama. Of all the forms of Lord Krishna, you are the most merciful because you're giving freely to everyone love of God, Krishna Prema. In other incarnations the Lord is not so merciful. He would give love of God only after a person really is qualified to receive it. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, He is so merciful that He gives love of God to people even though they're not qualified and they, they may not deserve it. But out of His kindness, out of His mercy, so different incarnations of the Lord display different features. Just like Lord Ramachandra, He is He's, he's showing the perfect example of, of etiquette, the proper behavior of a person. Right? Lord Ramachandra, he is, what's the word for etiquette? How? Uh, huh? Maryada. Maryada avatar, thank you Prabhu, yeah, Maryada avatar. Then he shows the proper etiquette, he's very obedient to his father. He's very strict in keeping his vows, right? His father asked him to go to the forest for fourteen years and even after his father died, and his brother Bharat came and pleaded with him to come back home and become the king. Lord Ramachandra said, no, I have to complete the vow, fourteen years. Vanavas, vanavas right, go to forest, Chodrasal Vanavas, fourteen years in the forest. Lord Ramachandra didn't want to go back until he had completed that fourteen years. He's, so he's very strict in his principles, in his vows. So he, he was the perfect king and he was loved and admired by everyone. Even today they speak about the kingdom of Lord Rama the, or the government of Lord Ram, Rama Raja. They want that kind of government. But if they want that kind of government, you have to have Lord Rama. Other people cannot fit the bill. Lord Rama is very special. So that was Lord Rama. Now Lord Krishna, he is uh, Lila Purushota. In the pastimes of Lord Krishna, we're seeing the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Lord Krishna is displaying to us the nature of the spiritual world. He is performing activities like his rasa dance. The rasa dance is not of this material world, it's the spiritual world. So Lord Krishna comes to show us the, what are the pastimes in the spiritual world. Lord Krishna is Swayam Bhagavan, the original personality of Godhead. And he is displaying uh, his loving dealings, his Madhurya Rasa, in two different ways in Parakya Ras and Swakya Ras. Parakya Ras means with marriage and Swakya. Or, or the other way, Swakya is marriage and Parakya Ras is without marriage. And so in, in both ways, Lord Krishna is showing pastime. In Dwarka, he had his wives. He was married to 16,108 wives. And he gave each wife a palace. And he resided with each of the wives. So the, these are very special pastimes. This is pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when he was a young boy, then he had parakiras with the, with the gopis, unmarried. He was enjoying dancing Ratha Lila with the gopis and satisfying their desires. So this is the spiritual world, the activities of Lord Krishna. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he, his pastimes are what is called Audarya Lila. Very, very merciful. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is showing the greatest mercy because he's is distribu distributing to everyone love of Godhead without consideration who is qualified and who is not. Sometimes people think, oh, you should be a brahmana, oh, you must be born in a high-class family. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not make that kind of distinction. He distributed Krishna consciousness, love of Krishna to everyone, young men, old men, women and children. Everyone could receive the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he is famous for d delivering the fallen souls. So, particularly in this age, which is the age of Kali. So the age of Kali means people have very poor qualities. They're not very pious. They're not very religious. They're not very good at keeping vows. There, there's so many, we have so many problems. We're lazy, we're misguided, we're unlucky, we're always dis disturbed. So Lord Chaitanya, you have to understand Lord Chaitanya is Krishna Himself and He has come to be merciful to people. When Lord Krishna came, He had a condition. You want to get the mercy of Krishna, you have to surrender. From the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Sarva dharmam parigyajnam mamikam sharanam braja. Aham tvam sarva pape bhyo animas. Lord Krishna said, give up all forms of religion and just surrender to me. I will free you from all sinful reactions, do not fear. So Lord Krishna made conditions, you want to get mercy from Krishna, first surrender. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had no such conditions, even without surrender. Lord Ramachandra even said, anyone who utters my name one time, I will give them shelter. I can never give them up. But he had a condition, you have to utter his name. 
you have to chant his name. But Lord Krishna, no, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rather, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has no conditions. So he is the most merciful of all the forms, of all the incarnations of the Lord. And he is coming along with his brother. When Lord Krishna comes, he's never alone. We know Lord Ramachandra was with Sita and Lakshman and Hanuman and so many others were also there. And Lord Krishna, he came, he, we see Lord Krishna in Dwarka, he's worshipped with uh, Rukmini and Satyabhama. And in Vrindavan, Lord Krishna is worshipped with Srimati Radharani. So, Lord Krishna is not alone. And if you go to Nandagram, you see Lord Krishna with his mother and father, Nanda and Yashoda. Lord Krishna is never alone. Not Lord Narayan is with Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. She is the consort of Lord Narayan. And that same Lakshmi is with Lord Narsimha Avatar. Narsimha Avatar is a Vishnu form. And so Lakshmi is also there with Lord Nishingadev. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's coming and he is with his brother Nityananda. He's coming not with his wife but with his brother. And together these two lords, Chaitanya and Nityananda, they're giving mercy. There's another song which we didn't sing this morning. We can sing another time, but it goes, Parama Karuna Pahudvijana Nitai Gorachandra Sabha Avatara Sarasiramani Kevala Ananda Kanda. Can you understand the meaning? Maybe? Parama Karuna supremely merciful. Paramakaruna Ahu Dvijana. These two personalities, Chaitanya and Nityananda, they are Paramakaruna. They are supremely merciful. Why? Sabha Avatara Siro Siro Siramani from all the avatars, all the incarnations of the Lord. They are giving a process which is Kevala Ananda Kanda, which is simply joyful. Mm, this is the special feature of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he's giving the process which is very joyful. What is it that's joyful? The Sankirtan movement. The chanting of the holy names of Lord Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, they have come to get everyone to chant the holy name. Sometimes people ask, why are their arms up in the air? Put your arms up, in the air. everyone put your hands up. All right, how do you feel? Do you feel happy? Yes, right, that's right. Put your hands up in the air, you'll be joyful just by putting your hands up. And if you chant Hare Krishna loudly, you'll be ecstatic, even more joyful, you'll be ecstatic. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, their hands are up in the air, they're dancing, chanting, and they're telling us, join with us, chant and dance, be happy because that is the nature of the soul. Our soul is joyful. We're not meant to be miserable, we're joyful souls. In the Bhagavad Gita Lord Krishna said, Brahma Bhuta Prasan Atma, Prasan Atma, joyful soul. One who knows Brahma Bhuta, 
who knows that I am Brahman, I am spirit, I am not the body, then that person is a joyful soul. If we are thinking we are the body, we won't be joyful. Why? Because the body is temporary. The body is subject to old age, disease and death. Nobody likes these things. But the body has to undergo these things, cannot avoid them. So being in the body, being in the bodily consciousness of life, we'll be miserable, we won't be happy. But if you understand you're not the body, understand you're a soul, you'll be joyful. And if you understand the duty, the business of the soul, to surrender to Krishna, then you'll be even more joyful. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, they have surrendered. Just like somebody comes in with the guns and say, okay, surrender. Okay. Put your hands up in the air, right? Sometimes you have to surrender to the enemy. Okay, put your hands up in the air. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda, they have surrendered to Lord Krishna and they are showing us by their example how to surrender. Chant the holy name and dance in ecstasy, love of God. So these two forms of the, uh, we, as we say, the deities, they are Worshipped, we can worship them by offering different articles like we do arti. Well, first of all, we cook for them, and you can see their dress, clothing. So, regularly, the deities should be taken care of, the dress should be changed. You like to change your dress. Here in Malaysia, it's very hot, it's very hot and we sweat, perspire, we like to change our clothes regularly. So Gorni Thai also, they should be changed, their dressing should be changed regularly. And when we cook, whatever is cooked, we offer to them for their pleasure. When they come to stay in the house, you bring the deity into your house, then it's understood that the deity becomes the proprietor of the house. And everyone in the house is the servant of the deity. That, is, that should be the consciousness. Even there's a, there's a famous deity in the city of Jaipur. If you go to Jaipur, it's not far away from there, it's an important city in India, a, a historic city, Jaipur. They, sometimes it was called the Pink City. It's not called the Pink City anymore because so much development and things changed. But it used to be called the Pink City. It used to be painted pink. Anyway, the, the, there's a king there, there was a ruler of Jaipur. In the past, there was a king, they took, the government took everything away from the kings. But in the past, there was a king in Jaipur and he was a great devotee. He was the devotee of Lord Krishna. So it happened that Vrindavan was being attacked from Aurangzeb. You know Aurangzeb? Have you heard of Aurangzeb? You don't study Indian history here in Malaysia. <laughs> study Malaysian history. <laughs> so anyway, in Indian history, in the past there was a there was a Muslim ruler called Aurangzeb, and he was breaking the deities. He was trying to spread the Islam everywhere, and he was sending his army to break the deities the different deities which the Hindu people were worshipping. 
So in Vrindavan, of course, they had deities like Govindaji, the deities put there by the Goswamis. You know the song about Vrindavan? Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan, Sri Govinda, Gopinath, Madana Mohan, right? So three main deities of Vrindavan, Govinda, Gopinath and Madan Mohan. So these deities were in danger. So they brought them to Jaipur. The people of Vrindavan were so dead, they didn't want anything to happen to the deity. So they secretly, they arranged to bring the deity by horse and cart. They brought the deities to Jaipur. And the, of course, the, the, the king of Jaipur was a great devotee. So he said, yes, of course, they can stay here in Jaipur. Because they, the Muslims could not attack Jaipur because the Muslim, the, the Hindu king, the king of Jaipur was very powerful. He had a great army, so they couldn't attack him. Anyway, they brought the deities there, and the deities are still there. They're still there in Jaipur. The original Govinda and, and Madan Mohan, Madan Mohan got taken to another city, and uh, Damodara is also there, Damodara deity is there in Jaipur, and Gopinath, Gopinath is also in Jaipur. So anyway, these deities came there to Jaipur. After some time, Aurangzeb died and there was no more danger anymore. They were not worried about them. So the people of Vrindavan said, we want to take the deities back to Vrindavan. But the king said, no, no, no. He said, Krishna has come to my home. I cannot tell him to go. So the king said, I will make Govinda the king and I will be his servant. And that's the position today. Govinda is the king and the king is a servant of Govinda. So when you bring Krishna, you bring a deity to your home, or you bring Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to your home, you should think, he is the man, he is the proprietor of the house and I am here as his servant. The deity is the master and we are the servant, right? Ishwara, Ishwara, or Ishwara, Parama, Ishwara Krishna or Sabrija. Ekala Ishwara Krishna or Sabrija. Ekala Ishwara Only There's only one Ishwara Krishna. All others are his servants. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is non different from Krishna. He is the uh, Krishna coming in the Kali Yuga and he's coming as a devotee and he's coming to teach us to chant Hare Krishna. So we bring the deity to our home, we have to serve the deity. And how do you serve the deity? You serve the deity, as I said, you make clothes to put on the deity, to dress the deity. You put also flowers, we use flowers, make a flower mala to decorate the deity. We offer arti to the deity, different articles like incense and ghee lamp and water and chamara and flowers. These things are offered and when we cook, whatever we cook, we will offer it to the deity. You will have to understand the deity is not a statue, but the deity is person. And the deity can eat, the deity can walk, the deity can talk. And there are deities like that. In the past it's been shown that they ate or they walked or they talked. But they will only do these things with their devotees, with those who are very pure devotees. If you're not a very pure devotee, then you won't be so fortunate. 
Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yeyatamam prapadyante tamsta taiva pajamya. As you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. So everything is based on surrender. We have to also surrender to Krishna. We have to surrender body, mind and words in the service of Krishna. Not just only the body, not just only using the body for Krishna's service, but our mind also must be used, must be fixed in service to Krishna. And we should speak also words which are for the service of Krishna. We want to develop that mood of being the servant. Krishna is the master and I am one tiny servant. Now Krishna doesn't need our service. He has many other servants in the spiritual world. He's not hungry to get our rice and kurma. He's not hungry to get our offerings, our idli and dosa. Krishna has many gopis and goddesses of fortune all serving him. But he comes in the form of the deity, he wants to get our love. Love. Lo the, and the expression of real love comes in the form of service. If you love someone, you will serve them, just like the mother will serve her children, and the wife will serve her husband. In the same way, the devotee will serve the deity, he will serve the, the Lord coming in the form of the deity. The Lord is so kind that he comes in the deity form. Srila Prabhupada gives an example, he said, just like in the past, you know, we had mail, we would, send, we would send letters to people. Nowadays we would call it snail mail, right? The snail mail means it goes very slow, the snail, we don't have the email, but in the past we didn't have email, nowadays it's all email, very fast, but in the past it was all snail mail. So when you wanted to post a letter, you would put it in the post box. And you put it in the post box, then the postman will come, he will collect the mail, and the mail will be delivered to the, to the person who is addressed on the envelope. So Prabhupada says the same way with the deity. If you have the authorized deity, then whatever service you do, it will be delivered to Krishna. Now, if you make your own post box, <coughs> nobody will collect the mail. You know, you may think, I want to send the mail, I will make my own post box. That's no good. You have to have the authorized post box. And then the postman will come, and he collects the mail and he will see that the mail gets delivered. In the same way, when you have a deity, it must be authorized. You cannot just simply worship anyone or anything. It must be an authorized form of the Lord. And the authority comes from the spiritual teachers, the acharyas. They tell us what form of the Lord we should worship. So, if you are worshipping something or someone which is not authorized, there will be no result. There will be no result. But if you worship according to the Acharyas, if we worship according to the Shastras, then you'll get the result that whatever service you're offering to the deity, it's going to Krishna. It's otherwise, 
you wish to make your own deity, no result, no, ch no benefit. But when you do everything in the authorized way, then it's all delivered to Krishna. So this is the idea behind the deity worship. The Lord comes, He can appear. We say God is everywhere, He's in everything. But He's especially in the deity. When He comes in the form of the deity, it is called Archa Vigraha or Archa Avatar. The Lord is descending in that form and He's entering into material elements. But the material elements are being spiritualized by His potency. Because God is all-powerful, He can change matter into spirit. What is material, the deity may, may be made of metal, may be made of wood, it may be made of paint and colors, it may be made of paper, it may be made of jewels, it may be in the mind. There are different things the deity can be made of. But these can be, these are spiritual if we follow the authorized process. If we get the blessings, we get the, the, the help of the devotees, then the Lord comes at the request of the devotees. When the devotees chant the holy name, then the Lord comes. Just like Lord Krishna told the devotees, He said, I am not in the hearts of the yogis meditating on me. And I am not in the Vaikuntha, but I am wherever my devotee is chanting my holy name. So this is how Lord Krishna reciprocates with the devotees. When we chant the holy name, then the Lord comes by the chanting. So worship of the deity, in the worship of the deity, it's very important that you have to chant the holy name. Worshipping the deity, it's not just ring the bell, blow the conch shell, burn the incense, break a coconut. You have to chant the holy name. The chanting of the holy name is the important activity in the Kali Yuga. Lord Chaitanya is very inclined to the chanting of the holy name. And when you chant the holy name, then certainly he will appear and he will come and take part in the kirtan. So when you worship the deity, you have to pray like that. We have to encourage Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, Please come and join our kirtan. Please come and chant with us. We want to dance and chant with you in ecstasy of love of Krishna. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we said, he is Krishna. Why is he coming as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He's coming to experience the pleasure of devotion. Lord Krishna likes to enjoy, He's the supreme enjoyer, right? We said Lord Krishna had 16,000 wives, he had so many cows, He was enjoying, He was always stealing the butter and eating the butter and the yogurt, He was doing so many things, enjoying with His cowherd boyfriends and with the girlfriends. Lord Krishna likes to enjoy. But Lord Krishna saw the gopis were enjoying more than him. He thought, these girls are enjoying more than me. Why they're enjoying more than him? Well, they're seeing Lord Krishna, he's so, so handsome, he's so good looking, he's so wonderful. They were enjoying his qualities. And they were enjoying also having a relationship with Him. And they enjoyed also 
they saw how much Krishna liked them. And when they saw how much Krishna liked them, then the gopis enjoyed hundreds and thousands of times more than Krishna. So Krishna thought, these people are enjoying more than me. I want to experience that pleasure. And that is why Lord Chaitanya came, why Krishna comes as Lord Chaitanya. That he comes to experience the bliss, the pleasure of the gopis which they have in loving Krishna. He wants to, take, he wants to experience their happiness. So Lord Chaitanya is enjoying that mood of the gopis. So generally in worshipping Krishna there are some principles to be followed. Some principles, one thing, cleanliness is very important. Must be clean, means that you're going to worship the deity, you should bathe before you worship the deity. You have to take full bath and put on clean cloth, then you can worship Krishna. And of course when we dress and we should put on tilak, put tilak on the body and like that. So cleanliness is important and also punctuality is important. These two things are very special important in worshipping the deity. You must be clean and you must be punctual. Means you should do the things at the same time, daily. Daily you should do the arti, you should do the puja, you should offer the food, same time. Just like we like to eat at regular times. If you're regulated in the eating, then it's much healthier. You know what time your food is and you're ready to eat. Your body can be regulated. If it's very irregular, you don't know what time you're supposed to eat. It's not so satisfying. Prabhupada was very particular. He liked to have his lunch at a particular time. And if the person cooking for him was late, then Prabhupada would get a little upset and say, why are you late? So similarly, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, they're persons. You bring the deity, it's a responsibility. Of course, Lord Chaitanya is very merciful, but don't take advantage, <laughs> right? Don't take advantage. We have to try to be strict, follow the standards and give pleasure to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And it's, it's not only just cooking but also kirtan. Lord Chaitanya likes to hear the chanting of the holy name. Kirtan can be singing but it Talking, discussing philosophy, just like devotees sometimes they have groups and they go read Ramayana or Mahabharata or Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, they will sit and read together. But you can also read to the deities. The deity likes to hear. They like to hear Shastra. So bringing the deity into the home it's a responsibility. So Ram Tosi Prabhu is taking this responsibility along with his good wife 
and the three daughters. I don't know how much the three daughters will help, but <laughs> up to them. But Ramtu and his wife, they are both initiated devotees, and they have been for some time. So they are anxious to have the deities in their home. They were beginning the worship in Sri Gornikar. Okay, are there any questions? Anyone? Are you ready? Grab something? I just like me. Why not? You told me 12.15, now it's nearly 12.30. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Good job. 